Now that we've introduced the idea of dictionaries, we're going to return back to structured CSV files. And the entire reason why is because, well, CSV happens to handle dictionaries. So quick, super refreshing, what we're talking about here is if we're dealing with a CSV file, CSV stands for comma separated values. And so each entry in say, for example, a table could also be represented as sort of little commas separating each one of the values. And so now we have sort of this uh, entry for Chicago and every single one of the values on each row happens to also have those values as well. And once again, we also introduced in our last module the idea of the CSV module. It handles uh, all of the CSV files, very similar to some of the different libraries that we've seen. Their job is to look at CSVs and process them. And it does this by simply using something like csv.reader. Now, again, this is just going to process it as a CSV and that is it. But you may once again notice that we happen to have uh, you know, this header row that allows us to uh, say, oh, well, you know, the entry at the first column is uh, all cities, the entry at the whatever column would be here for Atlanta. And when we're dealing with, say, for example, a, what's the word I'm looking for? When we're dealing for our case of just using reader, it treats everything as if it's just an entry. Well, more specifically, it would treat things as if they were in a list. So if I wanted to represent a particular column, I'd use line four, uh, so to speak. Maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe instead I want to uh, say, oh, well, I do want to, I think that's, uh, let's see, that's zero, one, two, three, four. Yeah. Instead of using four and trying to, you know, count out each one of them, maybe I can use a dictionary. And that's exactly what the dict reader will do. Now, instead of saying csv.reader, you just come in and say uh, dict reader. And you still pass in our, our file, just like we would normally do. But now, instead of having to, if we were wanting to look for Atlanta, uh, instead of doing something like line four, we would go line, and we would use the header as our key, at Atlanta. So let's take a look at that. So uh, I happen to be using, in our case, this time I'm doing something uh, known as the Iris CSV, super common uh, for just example parsing. But again, it just happens to have uh, a bunch of flowers or irises uh, specifically, and what their sepal length, width, petal length, petal width, and then what specific species. So there are a lot of Setosa entries and then Versicolors, or however you pronounce that, and Virginicus. So the entire idea here is, as you can see, all of this is stored in a CSV file. So in our case, what I would want to do, uh, so just to load this up and I'll walk through each step as it's running, so again, we load that into memory. And then the first thing I'm doing here is I am creating that same dictionary reader. And once again, this will now allow me to use the header row and all of the, the values in the header as my keys for each row. So in that case, now I go through each line. And the first thing I am doing, is just as this example is saying, I want to extract out all of the Setosa entries for whatever reason. Uh, so if uh, the line at species, so again, whatever is in the species column, so first one is Setosa, so a Setosa, uh, if it equals our extracted uh, species, if it equal equals Setosa, then do the following. In this case, take out all of the entries for that row and I'm just storing them in, uh, I'm converting them into a floating point because it'll still treat them like it's a string and uh, take them and give them small little short uh, variable names. That way I can then add them to a contents uh, file and then just print those contents. So the first 10 entries uh, are just lists of lists. As you can see, uh, the first entry 5.1, 3.5, 1.4, 0.2. 
That's the exact entries that we see here in the first entry. So again, we're just extracting out all of those entries. Now, same kind of concept going on there. We also have a method for working off of our dictionary writer. So the same kind of concept. We had a csv.writer uh, that would allow us to go in. We specify uh, the writer. We write all of our entries sort of just in using write row. Well, guess what? Just like we had uh, a dictionary reader, we have a dictionary writer. Uh, and then the entire idea here is first you have to specify when you're building this out, not only your file that you're working off of, but what are the going to be the keys and in what order? Again, because we're building something to a, a uh, physical file, so it does need to know sort of the order. And in this case, I've got uh, just some example, you know, if I was recording something like student data, uh, you know, ID, the exam, what kind of category student they are, freshman or some analysis I was looking at, uh, whether or not they were a completer of uh, work or they were a lazy student. Uh, I'm not doing that to you, I swear. Anyways, the entire idea would be that, oh, well, you first establish those are the columns. And then the first line is, oh, well, just make sure that you write those headers. So again, if we continue with our format and to just work off of it, since I've already done uh, Satosa as sort of an example, uh, let's use Virginica. So again, we're seeing the entries for Virginica, and if we were to scroll down to that first entry of Virginica, which is right there, 6.33, so we're seeing those values right there. And so now I want to make them a new file. So first, uh, establishing what that file is gonna be called. So again, I want it in the uh, data folder, and I'm going to give it a name of extracted, curly braces, because the curly braces are going to specify, uh, in our case, what the uh, extracted species is going to be. So again, Virginica in this case. Then I am saying what the headers are going to be, the column you know, headers are uh, established as, and then once again, uh, creating and opening that file with the with command, establishing our dictionary reader, writing the header, and then effectively going into the row of contents, uh, this section here, unpacking all of the values. So a row happens to have four values, the sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width, extract those using some short little variables. And the point I'm making here uh, in this little part is again, we can build a dictionary, uh, and to write all of those values. And so if you happen to have a lot of values, you're building a very massive CSV file, uh, it may be easier to just start with a small CSV uh, or small dictionary or an empty dictionary, and then uh, go in and add those entries in uh, one by one. And then all you would need to do is just like we would do when we are writing a row with the CSV writer, we would do writer.write row to the entry, we take that, we run it, we get no errors. We take a look over in data and there's that extracted Virginica that we were just talking about. And there's all of our entries written to a CSV file.